This PowerPoint is about theory and research on children's language acquisition. Let's go to the next slide. So some of the theoretical orientations that I will talk about in this PowerPoint include behaviorism, nativism, and progressive education. So let's go back to the first one here. This picture is of B.F. Skinner, who is an American psychologist. So he is the most prominent figure in the behaviorist school of thought. So the basic tenets of behaviorists thinking is that children learn language through adults modeling and reinforcement. So um, the concept that's very well known for the behaviorists thinking is what's called operant conditioning. So if you want to encourage certain behaviors in children that you are going you're going to reinforce those desired behaviors by positively praising them or rewarding them in some way so that the adult's encouragement will increase those behaviors in children. And the way they are thinking in behavior, behaviorism is that language and literacy is acquired through um, drills and repetitions conditioning and reinforcement. So most open, often instruction and instructional design is um, really based on the sys systematic um, sequential orders. So, behaviors think that um, children need to be taught from simple tasks and concepts to complex ideas and concepts. And that the teaching pedagogy in behaviorist is usually a very direct and explicit teaching. So, if you think about our classrooms, we still use a lot of direct and explicit teaching methods. For example, if you want to teach a specific grammar points or any mechanics of reading, vocabulary, some of these aspects of literacy are taught very directly and that we think that behaviorist teaching methods is still very useful um, strategy to use in the classrooms. The next theoretical orientation is the native, the nativist perspective. We also can say that it's innatist perspective and the theorist that is well known for this position is Noam Chomsky, who was at the MIT linguistics professor. Uh, he still is living, so he is still, uh, he, he may be retired by now. But the point that he raised about language acquisition is that, um, that humans are a pre- pre-wired in their brain and in their system 
to acquire a language from their own society. So Chomsky is specifically talked about the oral language acquisition. He's not really talking and explaining about um, written and written language. He's mostly explaining that humans are pre-wired at birth to acquire their societal language, that is oral language, whether the teachers or parents teach them the rules of the grammar or, or not, children are pre-wired to acquire their societal oral language. So that um, engine, per se, is called language acquisition device that we are born with. So Noam Chomsky's perspective on language acquisition is probably opposite to the behaviorist thinking. The behaviorist thinks that the children's children are like tabula rasa, the blank slate, that they come to the world not knowing anything, like they are, their brains are hollow. And so we as adults have to um, transmit what we know about the world and the language into their system and try to teach them through repetitions and imitations. On the other hand, Noam Chomsky, the nativist perspective, is not the way the behaviorist said that that the adults have to teach them the language. Noam Chomsky's position is we don't as adults we do not have to even teach because children are born with the language acquisition device L A D language acquisition device. And so they pick up by age two to three, four, by age five, kids pick up their societal oral language without adults input. So the next idea is about constructivist learning. Constructivist learning is also another um, theoretical orientation that is quite opposite to the behaviorist thinking. Because as I said, behaviorist thinking is, is that we um, adults think that children come to the world as blank slate and not knowing anything. And so teachers and adults have to impose our world or transmit our knowledge and language knowledge to the children. On the contrary, constructivist learning claims that each learner can construct, they can figure out and learn themselves and that they can learn that that is knowledge is not out there but knowledge or language learning is something that one experiences individually within the social context so the these constructs Constructivist ideas were mentioned by John Dewey, the American philosopher. John Dewey was the philosopher who really criticized behaviorist thinking, which was 
quite popular in the um, about 1910 to 1970s as a theory but John Dewey was criticizing the behaviorist thinking in this way Dewey said that um, children have their own experiences and they have their own interests. So if the behaviorist-minded teacher transmit the language learning and other knowledge system into the children's brain, then John Dewey was saying that adults are just really imposing the way adults thought adults are thinking and their world to the children so what he proposed what John Dewey proposed was why why don't we acknowledge and understand that the children bring their own experience and their own interests to any learning task such as language learning and cre as a adults and teachers we should create um, child-centered curriculum and so at that time when John Dewey was writing about these kinds of um, ideas about child-centered curriculum and child, child brings the, their own interest and experience and so forth, these kinds of thoughts in the 1930s were quite progressive at the time because at the time the behavior thoughts were quite popular. In addition to John Dewey, B.I.J. and Vygotsky are also well-known constructivists. Okay, so let's go on to constructivism. So let's try to find out what we mean when we say constructivism. So it clearly means that the learner uses their um, experiences and sensory um, organs to to experience and make meaning out of it so learning consists of both constructing meaning and systems of meaning and that of course learning occurs in the mind and that physical activities are necessary and learning involves language and that especially um, you know Biagia said that language learning is more of a or any any learning is really more of a, a individual kind of things that the individual engages with their world with the experiences and the social in, uh, interactions the in individual really uh, constructs meaning and internalize learning that way but um, Vygotsky a Russian psychologist is the person who really emphasized the importance of social function of learning so Vygotsky is the person that we can say that that really focused on the importance of social interactions that we learn language or any other kinds of knowledge through interacting with other people in the environment in the social interactions so constructivism again it takes time 
and they go through processes of learning and then finally internalize the the concept and so you know we we have to understand that there's a learner variance in motivation and the, their interest and their background, their experiences. They bring all these kinds of their past experiences to the task of learning or language learning to construct their own learning and internalize that learning. So again, constructivist, the very well-known um, theorists in the constructivist um, orientation is John Dewey. As I mentioned before, he is the person, a theorist, who's famous for bringing this notion of child-centered curriculum. So children learn through play and activities in real life settings. So as teachers, we would um, provide um, actual life, lifelike activities, field trips, and projects. So maybe the classrooms that that uh, apply John Dewey's child-centered curriculum should their classrooms um, should build around children's interests and um, trying to follow you know your curriculum should and activities and materials should follow the around children's interest This is how John Dewey looked. So again, he was the one that criticized behaviorist, saying that those traditional adult education is really top down and that adults are imposing their world and their knowledge system and language knowledge and they're imposing their standards upon our children. So he was famous for proposing what's known as progressive education. So that he proposed to to provide education and curricular activities and materials and text should be all centering around children's experiences, children's knowledge, rather than passive education, like a top-down, a banking system, like uh, adults are depositing their money into the bank, like that kind of banking system education. John Dewey was uh, saying that we should move away from those types of... Uh, um, banking system or passive education in the like the way the traditional education was teaching so an another two constructivists are like I said Lev Vygotsky and John Piaget and they were interestingly born on the same year, 1896. Lev Vygotsky was born in Russia. John Piaget was born in um, Switzerland. So there are some differences these John Piaget and Lev Vygotsky held as constructivist regarding how children learn. So it's, they're learning theorists. They talked about the theory of learning, right? So you can think about these different things. But the, um, the, the important thing to remember be the, you know, about the differences between these two um, constructivists held, Vygotsky and John Viaget, 
I would say you can just go over a few items here that I jot down but um, the I interesting difference to me is that um, PIJ was the one who um, really expressed that learning is happening within oneself. Learning is more of an individual thing even though the individual student needs the other people and social interactions to really learn and, and um, advance and internalize their learning. But basically what Piaget was saying that their learning does occur individually and that that individual person goes through the specific stages that's what Piaget was saying, and we'll go over those Piaget's stages a little bit more. Vygotsky's really more um, a person, a theorist, who talked and emphasized the importance of social interaction, that social factors play a fundamental role in people's mental capacity development. So that's, and that Vygotsky um, was saying that stages is not as important. Piaget was really talking about we go through specific stages to acquire certain things and certain knowledge at a stage when we are ready, when we are developed. But Vygotsky was op opposed to that idea that we are not, our mental capacity is not actually going through specific stages, according to Vygotsky. So this is what PIJ looked like, and he had a long life over. 80 some years. Um, so, again, social interaction was important, but you know, language learning and knowledge acquisition is really an individual process, according to him, to Piaget. And as I said earlier, Piaget is really talked about these different stages and that we as humans and children do exactly go through these kinds of stages. I mean, these are not scientific, like, exact years, but basically birth to two years, learning occurs around, you know, your through sensory motor um, experiences. And that the stage two, two to seven years, is when the children are starting to develop some language, actually not some language, important uh, basics of and syntax of languages in language in the pre-operational period. And then the stage three, seven to 11 years is when um, children are starting to uh, learn some a little more abstract items and but still their operational functions are quite concrete. And then um, stage four, age 11 through ad adulthood, is when, you know, students are starting to think in abstract, logical, systematic terms as they learn. So age 11 is about fourth, fifth graders that at that time they are starting to really think in abstract terms. Before that, our children, second grade to fourth grade or so, they are still, their op mental operations are still at the very concrete level. So 
that's when we have to use a lot of hands-on materials as well as stage two pre-operational period students are starting to link their learning with the specific objects and and so at that time in two to seven years the hands-on materials are important ways to teach kids something about learning this is Vygotsky's picture when he was alive he was a, a very a prodigy like person when he lived he wrote 186 different kinds of works when he lived he he died when he was 37 while Piaget lived until his age into late mid to late 80s Lev Vygotsky lived until 37 years old and in while he was alive he was a special ed teacher and he was a professor and theorized learning theora theories and many of the learning theories he um, explained and he published a lot but the most important learning theory that we all should remember is the zone of proximal development so the definition of the zone of proximal development is the distance between the actual developmental level and the potential development so what he's saying is there is a the zone of actual development and there's the zone of proximal development so if you think about the zone of actual development that is when the student is independently doing the work at in that point the ZAD the zone of actual development student does not need help he is independent within certain things certain concepts and activities so the zone of actual development is the child's or student's independent level of learning and performing whereas the zone of proximal development the ZPD is um, where the child cannot um, accomplish the task by himself so he or she needs adults teachers or more capable peers help to accomplish that task so there is a difference between the ZAD to the ZPD so our goal is to provide scaffolding or guidance scaffolding means guidance so that the child can accomplish and finish the task with our help within the zone of proximal development.